Hello. Today, today I'm going to be showing you how to build an RPM detector, or in other words, a device that will sense and calculate the number of rotations an object completes per minute. There are probably a lot of ways to do this, but I found that the method with both good speed and practicality is infrared sensing. Let's say we have an infrared light emitter and an infrared light phototransistor that acts as a switch passing current or blocking current, depending on whether or not it's receiving infrared light. Also, both are pointing at the rotating object in question. If our object is white or some other color that reflects infrared light for the entire rotation, the infrared receiver will send my microcontroller a constant on signal. But by putting something on there that absorbs infrared light, like black tape or black marker ink, on each rotation, the microcontroller will pick up an off signal from the receiver, which we can use in our code to count RPMs. So let's go over the parts list. First of all, you're going to need an Arduino Uno or some other kind of microcontroller and a breadboard. Next, you might want to use an LCD screen for displaying the RPMs. If you don't have one, you could always use the serial print function in Arduino. Next up, you're going to need one of these infrared emitter receiver duos. I'll leave this and all the other parts in the description. And last but not least, you are going to need resistors. One for the LCD screen and two for the infrared sensor. So let's move on to the circuit diagram. Up here so far, I have the Arduino Uno, a breadboard, and the LCD. So let's go ahead and grab have the infrared sensors. Now this website doesn't have an infrared emitter so I'm gonna have to use an LED in its place so we'll just leave it right here for a minute and they don't have the photo transistor like the one I have so I'm just gonna use this photo diode in its place and let's bring some resistors over here we're gonna need three of them one of these is going to get 2 kilo ohms. that's going to the LCD screen. Second one going to the photo transistor is getting 17k. Third one going to the infrared emitter is getting 220 ohms. So we'll put the photo transistor over here and the infrared emitter over here. And I said this one got 220 ohms. That's going to the positive end of the infrared emitter and just a regular wire going to negative. Make that black. This is the 17K going to the negative end of this photo transistor. And the positive end just gets a normal wire. We'll make that red. And also going to the negative pin of the photo transistor is the data pin. That's gonna go back to pin three, I'll make that black. It's gonna to go to pin three because pin three is the second of two interrupt pins that the Arduino Uno has. I'll get back into that in just a second. And the last resistor is going to the LCD and it's gonna be hooked up to negative. This resistor is going to the contrast pin which alters the contrast of the LCD screen, make it brown. So our first wire is gonna to go to ground, we'll make that one black. Second one is positive, we'll make that one red. We'll move these kind of out of the way. I'm gonna actually flip this around, it might be easier. Pin four, register select, is gonna to go to pin one, we'll make that yellow. Pin five, the read and write pin, is gonna to go to ground, we'll make that one black. And this enable pin is gonna to go to pin two, we'll make that turquoise. Now onto our data pins, data pin four, We'll make all these blue. It's going to go to pin four. Data pin five is gonna to go to pin five. Data pin six is gonna to go to pin six. And data pin seven is gonna to go to pin seven. And controlling the backlight are these two LED pins. The anode is gonna to go to positive. So it's gonna get a red. And the cathode is gonna to go to negative. So it's gonna get a black pin. Move that over here. And last but not least, We'll connect the ground and five volts pin. We'll make that one red. So what happens is this infrared emitter is going to send light to the reflective part of whatever we're about to spin. And that white material is gonna send the infrared light back down to this photo transistor, which is gonna send data back to the Arduino. And then a bunch of computer stuff happens, and then it sends that data out to this LCD screen. So let's move on to the code. Okay, so this is it. As you can see, we do not have a lot of stuff to go through, so I'm just going to go through it line by line real quick, and then on to the testing. So this is the library for the LCD screen. You can download it from Arduino's website. It's just all the background code for the LCD screen. And here we're declaring which pins we're using for the LCD screen. And these are the two variables that I'm going to be using for counting the RPMs. So RPM count is going to be the actual number of times the photo transistor detects something per second. And calculate RPMs is going to be the variable that stores the calculated number per minute. Void RPM is going to be our interrupt function. Basically
basically you have two interrupt pins for the Arduino Uno, which is two and three. Pin two is interrupt zero. Three, which is connected to the photo transistor, is interrupt one. So this is the function that's going to be called by the interrupt function. Here we have the void setup. So LCD begin, which initializes the LCD screen. And this attach interrupt command is basically what we're gonna use to control our interrupt function. So this means interrupt pin one, which is pin three, is the pin that's going to the photo transistor. RPM is the function that's called when this interrupt occurs. So when the interrupt happens, it calls upon this right here, and then RPM count increments. And this last one determines when the interrupt is gonna happen. So anytime there's any change on our interrupt pin. Now this function is reading digitally, so every time a one changes to a zero or a zero changes to a one. Now let's move on to the loop. First, we're doing some LCD stuff. We're setting the cursor to row three, column zero. So that's top left and we're printing tachometer. Second one, we're gonna set it to row four, column one. So that's the bottom row four spaces over, and this is the space we're gonna to use to print the RPMs. So in terms of counting, first we wanna set this thing to zero, so it's at zero count. And this save function is basically an initializer function for the interrupt. So basically this save function starts the interrupt, which calls upon this function, the RPM function, which is saying increment the amount of times that pin three picks up infrared light. And then it does that for a thousand milliseconds, or one second, and CLI ends it. So it goes for 1000 milliseconds, seconds and then it ends. And the number of times pin 3 picked up infrared light is stored in this RPM count variable, which is called upon in this function. So I, I've set up a couple of if statements down here saying if this RPM count number gets to be above 10 in one second, that means that it's probably something pretty fast like a motor or something. So I want RPM count to be multiplied by a number. So if I multiply it by a certain number, I can get the amount of rotations that it would be in one minute. Now this number I put as 30 because every time I would do 60, which is more common sense, it would be double of what the actual value would be. So I just ended up using 30, which is accurate. Same goes for this function down here, which I'll get back to in a second. Now this is our calculate RPMs variable. This is what is going to be printed out onto the LCD screen. This is our official RPMs number. So every time this loop runs through, the calculate RPMs variable variable stores that number, it gets printed on the LCD. So the second if statement is for kind of slower RPM counting. You can change this to whatever you want, but I basically said that if RPM count is below 10, which is something relatively slow, that I wouldn't multiply this RPM count number by anything. I would actually divide it. Now, it wouldn't make more sense to just keep the number what it is. So let's say I run my finger over it and it detects my finger one time, then RPM count would be one, and then calculate RPMs would be one, and that would would be what shows up on my LCD screen. But for some reason, every time I do that, it shows up as double of what it should be. So I put a divide by two here. If anybody knows why this happens, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. And last but not least, I have an LCD clear function here just to clear the screen and let the loop continue. So let's test this out. So this is our setup, this is what it looks like, and this is what I'm gonna be testing today. It's a little five to 12 volt DC motor. So step one is to attach something that reflects infrared light, and that is what this is for. I'm just gonna cut out a rectangular piece. Chop, chop, chop. Cut a little hole through the middle. Put it over our motor. Now let's plug this thing in. I haven't run anything yet, so the LCD isn't gonna display anything. Now let's upload it to the board. So right now the code is up and running. If we run our finger across it, it says one RPM, do it two times. So let's try this motor out. I'm gonna have it set at five volts. There we go, it's working. So five volts is around 1020, 1080. Five volts is its lowest setting. So 1080, 1020 would make sense. Now let's try this thing going a little bit faster. 12 volts. It's doing a pretty good job so far, keeping up. 12 volts, seems about right. Let's try eight volts. This is the mildly fast mode. It's doing a good job. Seems about right.
Well, that is about all I have for this video. If you don't have an LCD screen and want to use the serial print function, I'll go ahead and leave that code down in the description with all the other part numbers and stuff. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.